Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to this video in our series on A-Level Economics. Today we are looking at 3.4 Market Structures Part 1. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Firstly for today, efficiency. Efficiency can be used to judge how well the market allocates resources and the relationship between scarce inputs and outputs. There is a range of different types of efficiency. Firstly, allocative efficiency. This is achieved when resources are used to produce goods and services which consumers want and value most highly and social welfare is maximized. It will occur when the value to society from consumption is equal to the marginal cost of production, where price equals marginal cost. Secondly, productive efficiency. A firm has productive efficiency when its products are produced at the lowest average cost so the fewest resources are used to produce each product. The minimum resources are used to produce the maximum output. This can only exist if firms produce at the bottom of the average cost curve, in the short run this is where marginal cost equals average cost. It is only possible if there is technical efficiency, where a given output is produced with minimum inputs. But not all technically efficient firms are productively efficient. Thirdly, dynamic efficiency. This is achieved when resources are allocated efficiently over time. It is concerned with investment, which brings new products and new production techniques. The alternative is static efficiency, efficiency at a set point in time. Allocative and productive efficiency are examples of static efficiency. Dynamic efficiency will be achieved in markets where competition encourages innovation but where there are differences in products and copyright and patent laws. Supernormal profit is required to provide firms with the incentive to invest and the ability to do so. Lastly, X inefficiency. If a firm fails to minimize its average costs at a given level of output, it is X inefficient and there is organizational slack. This is a specific type of productive inefficiency as it occurs when they fail to minimize their cost for that specific output. For example, the minimum point on the average cost curve may be at 100 goods at a cost of £5 each. The firm is producing 125 goods and so is not productively efficient. It costs them £8 to produce each good, but they could produce 125 goods at £7. Therefore, they are X inefficient since they are not producing on the lowest AC curve. It often occurs where there is a lack of competition so firms have little incentive to cut costs. Let's first look at perfect competition. Perfect competition is a market where there is a high degree of competition, but the word perfect does not mean it maximizes welfare or produces ideal results. There are few industries that fit this type of market structure, one example may be agriculture but government interferences may prevent it from being so. In reality, the assumptions made rarely hold and no market is completely perfectly competitive. What are the characteristics of perfect competition? Firstly, for a market to be perfectly competitive, there must be four key characteristics. This means that demand for the firm's goods is perfectly elastic, and prices are solely determined by the interaction of demand and supply. The firms are price takers. Secondly, there must be many buyers and sellers. This means that no one firm or customer will be able to influence the market. For example, the decision of one firm to double their output or the decision of one buyer to double their consumption will have no effect. If the firm did manage to have an effect, this would mean the market was no longer perfectly competitive as there would be one large firm and other smaller firms, or one large buyer and other smaller buyers. Thirdly, there must be freedom of entry and exit from the industry. This is important as it means that when a business is making profits anyone can enter that market and start producing that product for themselves. As a result, businesses are unable to make huge profits in the long run and if they are making losses they are able to leave. In the long run, they make normal profits. Next, there must be perfect knowledge. This enables firms to know when other firms are making profits which will attract them to join the market. Moreover, all firms have the same costs as they can use the same production techniques. 
It also means that any attempt to raise prices above the level determined by the market will lead to no sales, as customers will be aware they can buy the same good for a lower price and firms know there is no point lowering the price as they will sell all their goods at the higher price determined by the market. Lastly, the product must be homogenous, where they are identical so it is impossible to tell the difference between one make and another, for example, semi-skinned milk. This is important because it means if a firm raises its prices above the competitors no one will buy it and they will not gain from lowering their price because they can sell all of your product at the same price as everyone else. So, what is the profit maximizing equilibrium? Firms are assumed to short run profit maximize and so the firm will produce at MC equals MR. In the short run, it is possible for the firm to make a normal profit, a super normal profit, or a loss. However, firms in perfect competition can only make normal profit in the long run. This can be seen in the diagram. In the short run, firms are making the super normal profit of the shaded area. Prices are set by the market at P1, where S1 equals D1. As a result, the firm faces the demand curve of AR1 equals MR1 and produces where MC equals MR1 at Q1 goods. However, since there is perfect information and ease of entry, the fact they are making supernormal profits will encourage new entrants to the market. This will increase supply from S1 to S2 and lead to a fall in price from P1 to P2. The firm now has the demand curve AR2 equals MR2 and produces where MC equals MR2 at Q2. This is also where AR2 equals AC and so they are making normal profits. If the firm was making a loss, Firms would leave the industry and this would decrease supply, pushing prices up and reverting to the long-run equilibrium. So, how does this relate to efficiency? Perfect competition is productively efficient since they produce where MC equals AC. They are also allocative efficient since they produce where P equals MC. Thus, they are static efficient. However, they are not dynamic efficient. No single firm will have enough for research and development and small firms struggle to receive finance. The existence of perfect information also means one firm's invention will be adopted by another firm and so the investment will give the firm no competitive benefit. Governments tend to have to do all the research. Competition should keep costs, and therefore prices, low. However, firms will be unable to benefit from economies of scale and this may mean costs are higher than they otherwise could be. Now, let's look at monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition is a form of imperfect competition, with a downward sloping demand curve. It lies in between the two extremes of perfect competition and monopoly, both of which rarely exist in a pure form in real life. Some examples of firms in monopolistic competition are hairdressers, estate agents, and restaurants. What are the characteristics? There must be a large number of buyers and sellers in the market, each of whom is relatively small and acts independently. This means that no one buyer or seller has large price setting power. There are no barriers to entry or exit, allowing new firms to enter when supernormal profits are being made and some to leave in the case of losses. As a result, only normal profits can be made in the long run. The difference between monopolistic competition and perfect competition is that in monopolistic competition firms produce differentiated, non-homogeneous goods or services. This means that individual firms do have some price-setting power, and so the curve is downward sloping. What is the profit-maximizing equilibrium? In the short run, firms can make supernormal profits, losses, or normal profits. However, due to the lack of barriers to entry and exit, firms can only make normal profits in the long run. This is shown by the diagram. Firms are assumed to be short-run profit maximizers, producing at MC equals MR1 in the short run. As a result, they produce Q1 at price P1 and make a supernormal profit of the shaded area. However, in the long run new firms will enter the industry as they know that supernormal profits are being earned. This will cause demand for the individual firm to decrease and therefore the AR and MR curves will shift to the lift. The firm will produce where MC equals M.R. 2 at P2Q2. At this point, AC equals AR2 and so the firm is making normal profits. If the firm was making a loss, firms would leave the industry, and thus demand for the individual firm would increase as they had less competition. 
this would lead to normal profits in the long run. The limitation of this model is that information may be imperfect and so firms will not enter the market as predicted as they are unaware of the existence of abnormal profits. Also, firms are likely to be different in their size and cost structure as well as in their products, which may allow some firms to maintain supernormal profits because firms cannot compete on equal terms. So, what about efficiency? Since they can only make normal profit in the long run, AC equals AR and since they profit maximize, MR equals MC therefore, the firm will not be allocatively or productively efficient, as MR does not equal AR so AC cannot equal MC and AC cannot equal MR. They are likely to be dynamically efficient since there are differentiated products and so know that innovative products will give them an edge over their competitors and enable them to make supernormal profits in the short run. However, since the firms are small they may struggle to receive finance or have the retained profits necessary to invest. In monopolistic competition compared to perfect competition, less is sold at a higher price and firms may not necessarily be producing at the lowest cost. However, the market will offer greater variety and may be able to enjoy some degree of economies of scale. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share and comment below so we can clarify things for you.